hi guys welcome back to the channel if you're watching me for the first time my name is seed and i am super super excited to be talking guys we're checking out a video today and this one is titled russia's neighbor has extensive network of bunkers russia's neighbor that's finland am i correct okay <laughs> all right guys i'm super excited to check this video out if you're super excited as much as i am and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please smash the like button subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell guys so you don't miss out whenever i upload a new video okay to my returning subscribers i love you guys so so much thank you guys for always always tuning in without wasting much of your time guys let's check this out question is when is a parking garage not a parking garage and the answer is when it's part of a tunnel and bunker network to be used in case of war. And there's one country threatening that war, potentially the big threat, Russia. Tommy Rask, Helsinki City Rescue Department, is going to show us around. So if we go and see the main entrance... 20 metres, 60 feet below ground, cut into Helsinki's bedrock. How quickly can you put this together in case of uh, wow. war? 72 hours. And 6,000 people in here, how many people can you fit in shelters in the whole of Helsinki? Uh, over 900,000. So that's enough for the population plus visitors. That's yes, crazy. yeah, it is. The government's been building bunkers here since the 1960s. 5,500 in Helsinki, more than 50,000 across the country. Enough for 80% of the country's 5.5 million population. Deeper and deeper. Are you guys deeper. Yes. yes. But the scale of it, not the only surprise. Some of it's open to the public. What's this? It's a floorball game. This is a bunker with a sports hall. Oh my goodness. This is really beautiful. Much of it dual Amazing. to offset the costs. So this is one example of our dual purpose use of the shelter. Dual purpose, yeah. 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 So sports every day of the week, yeah. time of crisis, what happens here? All the sporting uh, goods stacked away. All these halls, these sheltering halls are divided by smaller uh, sheltering rooms. And not just sports halls, children's play areas, possibly the safest in the world, cafes, even a swimming pool. Just a sheltering hall, yeah. but with a pool. Yeah, with an Olympic sized pool. Oli Olympic size, okay. Wow. Wow. But everything here wow. with this one purpose in beautiful. mind blast doors, gas barriers, decontamination areas. Even the two billion year old. Everything is here, guys. More than just blast proof. So if there's a nuclear bomb, the rock itself absorbs the radiation, keeps yeah. everyone here safe. Yeah, yeah, that's and, the idea. And the tunnels as well, they're, they're curved this is so really that they beautiful. also prevent some of the blasts yeah, coming they, through. They take the, the most of the, of the hit. Interesting. And now it's a car park. It's a car park. Again. Again. <laughs> hey. Guys. That's, that's quite a bizarre feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One minute you're preparing for a war, the next minute you're playing hockey, and now, now it's a car park. Yeah. Here you can see the different uh, layers. And before we leave, Rask shows us another shelter just begun. Drill a hole in it, put explosives in, blow it, and yeah. move forward. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye. Up here come the traffic. This looks like the way out. Absolutely fascinating. And that's happening right under these streets here. Long-term plans for a potential conflict uh, that the country here really hopes that by joining NATO, that becomes an even more distant uh, prospect. Kim? Oh, uh, astounding, a really different world there that you're showing us. Snake Robertson live in Helsinki. Thank you so much. Let's go now to Fred Pleiken standing by in Berlin. And Fred, so what are the, the foreign ministers there saying uh, on that uh, Finland issue? 
Well, on the Finland issue, they say that they want Finland uh, in NATO as fast as possible, and of course Sweden as well. But right now, Finland is, of course, uh, one of the main points of the agenda, because that's the one that could ask for that ascension in the next uh, coming hours, as Nick was just alluding to. And, you know, one of the things that the uh, foreign ministers of NATO said as they arrived for this meeting uh, this morning is they say that they want to see this through very quickly. They say that Finland is obviously ready for NATO membership. It certainly meets all the criteria that are necessary. But they also say that, you know, if the Russians are angry about Finland wanting to come into NATO, the Russians and Vladimir Putin only have themselves to blame. They say that it's, of course, Finland and Sweden as well looking to enhance their security, and that is why they are asking for NATO membership. And and uh, the Germans who are hosting this meeting, they say they want to make it happen as fast as possible. I want you to listen to what the German foreign minister said as she arrived. Germany has prepared everything to do a quick ratification process and at yesterday evening many, many countries have underlined this as well, that it's an important uh, part that there won't be an inter-between time, a grey zone, but uh, that if uh, these two countries are deciding to join, they can join very quickly. Okay, guys, one thing I'm happy and glad about is Finland joining NATO. I am so happy for them, guys. They really, that was an impressive move, okay? They really do not have to wait for war to come before they get prepared, all right? So that was an interesting move, all right, I will say. Okay. Join very quickly, she says, but of course there are still some hurdles, or one major hurdle, and, and at this point in time that hurdle seems to be the Turks, seems to be Turkey. Turkey is saying uh, they are skeptical about Sweden and Finland joining NATO. They say, uh, in the form of the Turkish president, that they believe that these places are a uh, safe haven for terrorists, uh, as they put it, and so therefore saying that right now they're not sure whether or not they want to support that. It's quite interesting to hear, because as we were at the arrivals uh, earlier this morning, Kim, uh, for this meeting, um, all of the foreign ministers, or most of the foreign ministers, said that they wanted to work out these issues. They believe that they could work out these issues. I tried to ask the Turkish foreign minister as he arrived as well, but he simply went on and wouldn't answer that question. So this that certainly seems to be old that issue that is still there that could be a problem. But if you look at the vast majority of member nations, they certainly want to make this happen as fast as possible. And they certainly do believe that uh, Finland and Sweden will become very, very important members of NATO very quickly. All right. So, uh, Fred, setting uh, Finland aside Absolutely. for a second, uh, for the foreign ministers, so I guess, impact, uh, getting guys. together another chance to express their solidarity, that uh, united front against Russia. So concretely, what, what might that mean? Well, it certainly means that the NATO member nations uh, say that they are uh, working closer together. They want to add uh, and increase that coherence within NATO. Uh, and, and it's really a vast amount of different things uh, that they are working on right now, because there are, of course, a lot of NATO nations and nations within the alliance um, that border the conflict region, that border Ukraine, or that border, for instance, Russia. We, we heard the Romanian foreign minister. They're obviously very worried about the situation in the Black Sea. There's fighting going on in the Black Sea, very close to the borders with Romania. Then you have the Baltic states. They're obviously very concerned about their security, uh, being na na uh, neighbors of Russia, and at the same time hearing some of the rhetoric uh, that's coming out of Moscow. So what the uh, what NATO is trying to do is it's trying to project that co coherence and increase that coherence and it's doing that on a military level but on a political level as well kid oh wow guys <laughs> okay that was quite an interesting video okay um Finland, ever since Finland joined NATO I'm sure they've had um so many impacts on NATO I love the fact that they joined NATO I am happy for them because a lot of people doubted them. A lot of people were just like they shouldn't join NATO. But I love the step that it took. They actually joined NATO and that has been impactful for them. That has made them stronger. Okay. Coupled with how prepared they are against external forces. This is really amazing, okay? Thank you guys for watching. If you have any suggestions or recommendations, always drop it in the comment section, okay? Thank you guys for watching and see you guys in my next video. Bye.